some big news dropped this morning. Kawan Short, a defensive tackle that a lot of people love, was cut this morning. I know a lot of people will say, well, if he's such a good defensive tackle, why would the Panthers release him? Well, for one, he costs a ton of money to keep, and two, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. And that seems like that's one of the things that happens a often a lot with certain players that they just can't stay healthy. And I know some of you guys might be hesitant on wanting to bring in a player like Kawan Short, who isn't healthy. But he is a good player. And let's discuss this a little bit. Kawan Short, in my opinion, might be one of the top three defensive tackles available this offseason. Um, if you consider him and a couple other players, and we'll get into those players. Um, but if you consider some other players that are out there and uh, what the Raiders are missing specifically is a pass rushing defensive tackle. So if you consider the ones that are out there, how many are good at pass rushing? You know, there's probably not a lot of them out there that are actually good pass rushers. I think Kawan Short is one that is out there. Uh, also, with the Panthers releasing the two-time Pro Bowler, um, they also have his replacement. So it's not like they're going into free agency and they look at it like we don't have any players. Um, they have the replacement for sure. And on top of that, they're, you know, when you're paying a running back $20 million, you kind of have to cut corners at certain positions. And that's exactly what the Panthers are doing. Uh, they're going to let Short walk. Uh, they have Derek Brown to re replace Short. Um, but we'll kind of see how that works out. But for the Raiders, that that's a that means that we can possibly go out and get a very decent defensive tackle, right? We're missing a pass rushing defensive tackle. Um, now, obviously, the last two seasons, uh, Short really hasn't played a ton. And you can kind of see that down here uh, with his 2020 and 2019 numbers. He played a total of about 200 snaps. Um, he was hurt a lot, right? Um, he, even in 2018, like he, he played, but he wasn't a full time uh, played every single week without injury. He definitely had some uh, injury concerns uh, in 2018. But you look at some of his sack numbers before he really started getting hurt, right? Like he had 11 sacks in 2017, 2016, he had seven sacks, which is still really, really good. And the year before that, in 2015, he had his best year of his career where he had 14 sacks. And that's the year that people look back at. And that's the year where people say this guy is at the top of the list for top tier defensive tackles. And in 2015, he absolutely was. You know, in 2015, uh, he was right there as one of the top three or four defensive tackles in the NFL. Um you know, the second round pick, in my opinion, should be a player the Raiders should target. Uh, now, obviously, we did discuss this. He was hurt. Uh, so if the Raiders are going to bring him in, I think it would make sense to uh, maybe make his contract related to how much he actually pays, pl plays. Uh, so basically, he'd have to play to get paid. Uh, and I think that would benefit the Raiders as well as short, right? I think it'll benefit him. Now, uh, with his injuries over the last couple of years, his value, you know, let's be honest, has dropped a little bit, which is great for the Raiders, right? We should be able to get him from anywhere from uh, anywhere from seven to twelve million dollars. Just kind of depends on how long the contract is. Is like a one year deal. Uh, remember, the Raiders paid Malik Collins a, a pretty much a lot of money last year to to come in and be that three tech pass rushing defensive tackle. He really wasn't able to do that, especially not in the beginning of the year. He did get better towards the end of the year, but he is a player that. I don't think the Raiders bring back. Uh, he is a free agent, obviously, uh, especially when you can go get player a player like Kawan Short. And there's other really good defensive tackles as well. And, and let's kind of go over this list a little bit. Now, uh, Sue, obviously, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, just won a Super Bowl. Um, I think the smart thing for Sue is to go back to the Buccaneers. Now, remember, uh, Sue was a free agent last year as well, and he ended up re-signing with the Buccaneers. And I don't see it being any different this year. Sue's a good, reliable pass rusher he makes your other defensive tackles better um it only makes sense he goes back to the Buccaneers but let's just look at some of these players that the Raiders can possibly target now obviously Leonard Williams is at the top of the list right everybody wants Leonard Williams now this is technically defensive tackles uh Leonard Williams I think is actually listed under defensive ends so you won't see his name here but uh, Leonard Williams is the one guy that makes so much sense for the Raiders not only is he a great pass rusher, but 
he's a Raider fan, right? So it only makes sense that he's a good pass rusher. It's what the Raiders need, and he's a Raider fan. Um, but let's say we don't get Leonard Williams, right? Let's say there's a different defensive tackle the Raiders get. I think Kawan Short would be a great player for the Raiders. And there's a couple other players. Last year, if you guys watched my videos last year, you guys will know Adam Butler, uh, New England, man, same with Lawrence Guy. These are two guys who, um, although they're not great at getting to the pass rush, um, and they're not great at getting to the quarterback, they're still good defensive linemen, and that is something the Raiders need, right? We need smart, high IQ players that can fit Gus Bradley's system. Adam Butler is, is, is the one out of the two that I would absolutely target. I wouldn't mind either one of them, um, but he is the one that I would target. I think if, if he's a full-time starter, and keep in mind, uh, he wasn't the full-time guy with New England, right? New England rotates their players a lot. Uh, but if Adam Butler is a full-time starter, I could see him getting close to eight, nine sacks. And that would be fantastic if the Raiders are able to get get that. Uh, another player that I would love for the Raiders to target is Shelby Harris. Uh, remember, the Raiders drafted him uh, years back. I I can't even remember when back. It was like seven, eight, nine years ago. Uh, the Raiders drafted him, I think, in the sixth or seventh round. I think it was the seventh round. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a Reggie McKenzie draft pick. Um, he played pretty well for us. You know, I think we had him, and at that same time, I think uh, we had Eddie Vanderdose as well. And I believe we made the choice of keeping Eddie Vanderdose as opposed to Shelby Harris. Um, and we cut Shelby Harris. I think he was on our team for one season. And then going into a second year, I believe we let him walk. Um, which is crazy because, in my opinion, he's one of the better pass rushing defensive tackles. Obviously, he is up there in age; he's thirty years old. Um, that would be something for Gus Bradley to really decide. Like, is this a good fit? Is he not? Um, you know, Larry Ogunjobi is another player who I would love for the Raiders to get. You know, there's a lot of good defensive tackles. A player who I like that hasn't really lived up to the hype yet is uh, Puna Ford for the Seahawks. He's a young player. Um, this year, he it looks like he only had two sacks, but he did have nine quarterback hits, um, which is pretty good, right? Uh, especially going with the Seahawks defensive lines, pretty bad defensive line, if you ask me. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of good, talented defensive tackles and, you know, um, with players like Kawan short getting released and you can see him down here at the bottom of the list, he didn't play a whole lot, but uh, with players like him getting released, there's going to be other players that are going to get cut as well soon, you know? So, uh, keep in mind, so many good players are be getting cut. Uh, and one of the reasons why players are getting cut is because of the salary cap. Uh, you guys know this, right? The salary cap is going down and so many people have contracts that they put into place and and with that when they put these contracts into place they look at it like in the future the contract the the cap's only going to go up and obviously people didn't plan for it they gave contracts out assuming the cap was going to be um going up this year and it fell so uh people are are in that situation where you have to let a player like kawan short go uh, e even though he's not paid that much money like it, it's worth keeping him because you take such a big cap hit by letting him go um so again other players are going to be getting cut it's just a matter of time as they start coming in uh, i'm excited free agency man it's, it's uh it's one of the best parts of the year right there's like there's the actual season and then after the season you have the free agency period you have the uh, other parts to the off season right uh so uh, it's definitely exciting uh, if you ask me um, another position that the Raiders absolutely need to hit on is uh, free safety, defensive tackle, free safety. Those are the two spots that the Raiders need to go out, pay and, and bring someone in. Um, here's the thing last year coming into the off season or, or during the off season, I should say there was two players safeties that I was really high on that. I said, the Raiders absolutely need to go get, uh, one was Anthony Harris, who you see at the top of the screen here. And the second was Justin Simmons. They were both free agents last year and both of them ended up getting franchise tagged by their teams. Um, they're not going to get franchise tagged again. I, I'm pretty sure you can franchise tag a player two years back to back, but you know, once, once you franchise tag a player once, chances are they're not going to play on your team, right? Because a franchise tag is uh, for a player. It, it, it kind of pisses them off, right? Like, let's be honest now, as a player, you don't want to play under a, a one year forced contract. Yeah. You get paid a ton of money, but 
Um, you don't want to play under that. You want that long-term security, right? Four, four five, six years. Uh, Anthony Harris and Justin Simmons are most likely both going to be on different teams uh, going into uh, next year. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings and Devin Broncos, they honestly don't have a whole lot of cap, especially the Minnesota Vikings. Again, when you pay a running back 15 to $20 million, you have to cut at other places. Uh, and the Vikings are not going to be able to pay Anthony Harris. And um, I wouldn't mind getting him or Justin Simmons. Now, if I made a decision between the two, I would take Justin Simmons uh, because I do think Justin Simmons might be the better safety. Uh, at the same time, Justin Simmons gets a lot of interceptions every year. He had five this past year. I think he had eight the year before. So Justin Simmons is the guy that I would go get. Another player that a lot of you guys like is Marcus May of the New York Jets. But here's the one thing with May. I don't know if he's necessarily a fit to play free safety. Um, you know, the Raiders need... Uh, a true free safety, right? They need a guy that's going to play deep, that's going to run left to right, that's going to cover people, right? I think Justin Simmons is a great fit uh, for that. The thing with May is May lines up on the line of scrimmage. He lines up in the slot. He'll line up that linebacker. He'll play deep. He'll do all the different things. But you guys know that Gus Bradley's system requires someone to be a true deep free safety uh, so i don't know if, if that's necessarily going to be a, a good fit um again justin simmons i think is gonna be a great fit uh for us um you know again there's a lot of good players out there it's just a matter of are the raiders going to be able to get someone to fit gus bradley's system um, i'm pumped up man I i'm really excited to kind of see what happens this off season uh, the raiders are not that far away uh, i want to know what you guys think about free agency who do you guys think are some players that the Raiders should bring in? Who are some players the Raiders should stay away from? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Smash that subscribe button. Now, I'll see you guys next time with another video.